All right, today is the day and we are back in the studio here at the workbench looking at some of the things we've been working on the last few days. Um, particularly, we're going to focus a little bit on the turbocharger setup we're going to be using on the engine. Um, I'm using twin turbo two of the CT15Bs that originally came on the 1JZ of the Toyota. Of course, there was always just one as they kind of transitioned to that single turbocharger from the, from the original uh, sequential turbochargers with the smaller and larger turbocharger in sequence. Um, when the Toyota went to the single, they went to a CT15B. And there was one problem with that turbocharger. It had a little bit of a weakness in the ceramic blades on this thing. The way it was attached to the shaft, of course, as you can see with this one, um, broke off. Um, so we actually went ahead and upgraded that to the Inconel um, impellers on that. And you're going to see that now. We're going to show you a little bit of rebuilding those. And some of the other things that have been going on here in the shop. Anyway, let's go take a look at those things. So here's a view of the engine as I got it from a distributor who deals in JDM imports and as you'll see the turbocharger on these engines sits down low with the exhaust manifold pointing down we're going to be actually changing this and changing the clock rotation of the turbochargers now first thing of course you got to do is just strip these turbochargers down from all the peripheral accessories um, taking off the oiling system and the cooling system i'm going to go ahead and strip off all the pressure lines because we're going to be uh, actually powder coating the compressor housing and uh, doing a Cerakote. So anyway, all this peripheral stuff's got to come off just so we can have access to the main workings of these turbochargers and so when we go to do our finishing, they're clear. So it's just a matter of pulling all the peripheral stuff off. And of course, once the peripheral stuff's off, as you go to break it down, the first thing that's going to come is the clip ring that goes around the turbine housing and the center bearing housing. That's going to allow us to separate those. And then there is a big snap ring that holds on the compressor housing. Once you pop that out of the groove, it's free to come out. Of course, none of this stuff is going to actually come right apart. A little leverage on these parts. And of course, you want to make sure that these housings, these impeller wheels come straight off or you know, break a blade as they come off if it comes off of any kind of an angle. So using these wedges to work both sides pressure on both sides and then as that finally releases it's free the wheel is in good shape okay so this section in here really where it's going to hang up because of all the carbon built up from exhaust going through and uh, traveling around the turbine wheel so what we need to do no amount of power needed is going to take it. We've got a little bit of a gap there, and I'll show you how that is accomplished. I have these nice nylon wedges, that any wood wedges would work. We're going to put two blocks between uh, the casing here and the casing here. Leave a little bit of a gap. Slide a third wedge in there. Start moving that thing apart. This is a little harder because we don't want to bend these uh, bolts through there. So we're going to try to make sure we catch them in there. Of course, one good hit finally breaks that thing loose. And again, just trying to make sure that you're coming straight apart, and not turning at an angle. And there it is, that center bearing. Assembly, clear, ready to be disassembled itself, but moving on. As I said, I'm gonna 
Hey, can do this turban housing in a Cerakote ceramic coatings. Found a nice, uh, called a titanium gray. It really looks nice. And one thing about the Cerakote is it's so thin that if any spray into the turban housing will cause no interference with the blades. So assembling is just a matter of uh, putting it together in reverse order with all the new parts. Here putting lots of uh, assembly lube on the brass bearings. Luckily I have two turbochargers and I'm able to look at the old one just to make sure I've got my assembly and reverse process. Of course the better way to do this if you don't have that is to line up the parts as you take them out. If you're lucky enough to get a turbocharger that has a diagram somewhere, of course, that's always helpful. This little uh, retainer that keeps the oil trapped on the bearings, a little snap ring to hold that into place. Flip it over now, we put the bearings in for the turbine wheel side. Once that's in, as I mentioned earlier, I replaced the ceramic blades with an Inconel turban. And so now I'm just going in, uh, I have a little block made with a couple of razor blades set up to be perfectly level. And this is just a process of uh, taking the balanced Inconel turban blades and the compressor blades, which are balanced at the factory as well. Um, and they've just got to be mounted and put on this balancing rack until I've got where they will be balanced in tandem. Once I have that, know where those blades are going to go, put some assembly lube and uh, put our turbine blades through the bearing housing and then put the compressor blades on and uh, tighten them up. Always remember that if you're disassembling or assembling that this uh, nut on this compressor housing is always a left hand or backwards thread so they won't loosen on the spin ups. Once that center bearing housing is all ready to go, it's a matter of uh, inserting it into the compressor housing, putting that big snap ring back into place. The lock in position. Now the only thing that's uh, the output on this compressor housing in comparison to the oil and the water lines was for my setup lined up perfectly. The only thing I had to do is I'm going to have to change the clocking for my uh, turbine. So marking that where the little, little uh, dowel pin is going to have to be sitting now. Marking that, and then I'm going to take it over to the drill press, put a new hole where that dowel pin will now fit so that I can clock it in its new position. Cast iron machine very easily. Might have just a small hole for that dowel pin. Make sure that no filings have gone into my housing. Ready to go try it. There it is, my new clock rotation is about 90 degrees difference between the exhaust input and the compressed air output. Once it's in position, a little locking ring going around that turbine housing to Hold it to the center bearing housing. Tighten that up. The only thing left, of course, now we put all the peripheral stuff back on, but we won't be doing that until it's installed. And the engine side, all that plumbing is going to be new, so. Looks like it works.
you know, the two, the pair is ready to go. Once they're mounted on the engine, a little demonstration of the wastegate. And there it goes. Need to work. Now the exhaust, I need to put the wastegate tubing into here. It's going to be mounted there. Another one into this tube. As we're starting to build our exhaust system, the two will come out and come together in a merge crossover. From there, it's going to go down to the catalytic converter, down to the exhaust system. So while we're here, I'm going to show you a little look. I've uh, changed from the three coil wasted spark system of the Toyota going to a single coil for each spark plug using LS engine coils. Mounted them to a little plate. And now just uh, putting the boots on the spark plugs. Once those boots are all hooked, batten down the mounting plate. And we'll have a spark once we get the rest of the wiring system to that. Another thing I've been working on out here is so getting ready for another mold because I had the front mold done. I have this flange now ready to put the door up against. That's important. As you'll see when we do this mold, it's going to be a very narrow A pillar. So it's going to be tricky to put the mold through there. This mold also has uh, no mold for the window area where I'm touching, but we're going to have to strengthen it through this area because the door itself will go behind the glass there. But that's ready to go. Anyway, we've got the turbos installed, exhaust system getting laid out there, and the next thing, of course, we need to get our actual exhaust system coming off of the engine and into the turbochargers, getting that all built up. Ready to take a mold off of that. I'm going to have that actually set off and cast in a foundry that will do stainless steel. I cannot do stainless steel, so that will be set off. And then we'll have our pressurized side coming off of the turbos into a merger above the engine over into the intercooler. Going to build a carbon cover for this plenum. And then we got suspension pieces coming to be added to the subframe. Anyway, lots of videos on their works. So make sure you subscribe below, ring the little bell icon so you can follow along when those videos become available. Anyway, thanks for stopping by and come by again.